Hey, Dave from Head Games, and we are back with Dr. Porto's RB26, and now we're gonna digitize the pocket port and the combustion chamber. Check it out. Now, I've been really nice, these pins here, so it has a plate and these pins go through it to center the head. Would have been really cool if Centroid would have made this like this. Now we can get around this in the program, but wouldn't it be a lot nicer if it just came right from them where you didn't have to do that and the pin wasn't halfway into the, see this one here too, and it wasn't halfway out and you had to like try to go around it in the program and you just, um, yeah. So everything custom, everything's custom. So what we did here is we did a little pocket port. I showed you that in the last video. And we did a combustion chamber. You can see here, the combustion chamber we laid this back. So you got this line here. So lay it back and here and here, blend all this in. So now what Matt's gonna show you, Matt's gonna show you what he's, how he's gonna digitize this. But as you can see, all of this stuff is done by hand. And then you have to go back over it in the machine and probe it. So what we have right here, you can see that there's still guides in this chamber. We got one pair of valves, one intake, one exhaust in here. The spark plug hole is clayed off. We're gonna bring the probe into the machine to digitize this after we build a clay dam around it. And the probe's gonna come in, it's gonna plot left to right horizontally, it's gonna plot vertically and then there's going to be a big old web around the valves coming in and out of the deck surface. So we leave the valves in here for the, the first digitize so we can actually probe both sides of the valve and get an angle in the machine where the guide is at. So if we actually take a look at the valve, there's no margin on it. It's going to sit flat. We know it's gonna be on that 45, it's gonna be referenced. You can see that there's still a little bit of seat exposed, so we're actually gonna to need to pull this surface up a little bit in the CAD software, uh, but that's no issue. We, we are able to locate this, the angles for both of these off of the valves, and then we'll be able to replicate that angle across the rest of the head. So a lot of people think that, uh, you know, you just stick the head in the machine and it just kind of digitizes itself or reports itself. You actually have to figure out a lot of materials. You got to figure out, uh, not mid <laughs> you actually got to figure out a lot of stuff. Now, one thing is valve angles. Now, zero, I, I can't say zero, but a lot of heads have different valve angles and that's the angle of the valve perpendicular to the piston. So you have to figure out where is the valve at in the cylinder head and the only way you're gonna be able to do that is put the valve in there and he's gonna probe it and he's gonna see what angle they are and all that data needs to go into the program. The probe actually sits externally on the machine up here. You manually load and unload this tool every time just for the safety of it. There's a little ruby jewel on the end of it, but I'm gonna come in, make sure you're all locked in. Then you're gonna plug it in You can see this light started going off. Tells you that there's power going to the sensor. Just to check that it's actually working, you can see that it blinks when I touch it. All right, so now that we have the head in, the probes in, we're gonna locate this plate inside of the machine using the probe, using these dowel holes on either side of the plate and that'll allow us to get plot points and X, Y, Z coordinate on the machine. We'll be able to bring those points into Mastercam and we'll be able to locate this fixture in Mastercam to those points that we probe. So you can see after probing the bore, it gives us an X, a Y in relation to the machine zero or this coordinate system zero. And it gives you a diameter of, of the machined bore in there. Uh, so you can notice that it doesn't actually give us a Z coordinate in this. We actually have to come and touch the top of the plate afterwards just to get our Z height. All right, guys, so here it is. You see the probe is hitting. We have some clay in there for where the, you don't want the probe to go into the, into the, where the guide is. So you just want it to go around 
the port and it's going to make a map of it and you see it, it knows when to hit because it stops right there. Really cool is that you can actually watch what the machine is doing right on the screen right next to it. So this is the plate here and this is your parameter. What it's basically saying is it knows where the top is. Obviously nothing is that big, but it's going to go in here. Let me zoom in. This is the machine right up here and it has the probe and you can zoom in and see all of the these dots are where it's plotting and uh, after this we can this is basically what we're calling digitizing right so you're making the port it's going to see where it is because all this stuff is out in space to it and you're going to be able to um, make a tool path out of this so first it it, this is the first part and it goes through here and we'll show you the rest. So we're officially clayed off for chamber digitize here. Basically the clay wall sitting above the chamber is just so the probe has something to reference once the center of the probe crosses over that deck surface. This allows us to bring in more data than is actually needed into Mastercam and we can actually trim all of this extra material that it's going to probe inside the clay. We can snap all that down, make a nice flat surface and master cam, and that way our chamber lines come out nice and smooth. So now we have our data brought over to Mastercam. This data has already been modified, so everything looks kind of clean over here, but this will give you an idea of what comes into Mastercam after digitize. You can see there's a couple plots of data. There's lines coming all the way around the edge of the chamber, and we have what, what Centroid labels as webs, which are these center sections. You know, your spark plug sitting in here, you got them in between the valves going both ways. You can see all the chamber definition at depth. And if you take a look, this top line here comes in pretty clean. So this is, this is all the modification afterwards. Um, you actually need to come in and clean all this to the deck surface. So this this plane here that you see is in reference to the fixture plate. And all this data that comes in raw actually extends past this plane. And then you use this plane to snap all of your geometry flat to your deck and get clean cuts on your final cuts. So once you have all this wireframe geometry built out, you actually build these surfaces. So you can see the green underneath all of the wire frame in here and you actually repost that chamber geometry to all of your other chambers along the head uh, this this just makes sure that all of your profiles are going to be the same that everything's going to look consistent across the core and um, if you notice in between you can actually see that the probe geometry and the surface comes through the valve seat a little bit. Like this is a valve angle in here that you're seeing on, on both sides. We don't want the cutter to actually come in and cut out any of the seat. So what we do is we add containment geometry. You can see there's, there's nice circles in here now. You'll still get your radiuses coming through and over in your chamber geometry and we set it right above the, the valve seat. This just allows the, the tool to actually come in and recognize this as something to cut. And it'll come in, it'll do this little dip over and in between the valves. It'll, it'll do a little uh, Z motion to, to actually complete that round over in between. But it's not going to look past these surfaces in order to cut. So that'll help you save your seats. So if we take a look here, the ports are kind of built out in the same way. It's all based on wired geometry. You cut out your seat surfaces based off of this. And this is another set of containment geometry that you're gonna use for your, for your cup files. 
But looking through the surfaces here, we're actually looking from chamber side. These red surfaces are your seats going out towards your flange this way. So down in here, what we're actually looking at would be like your guide in this area, but you can tell that there's no definition for it in there. So when we're actually making these surfaces, we're making these surfaces smooth. We're not referencing, not trying to reference uh, the guide at all because we, we want the profile around it to be smooth. We're not really making sure that uh, the guide hole is is the cleanest part. We want everything to be one blended surface when it when it comes out. Um, you know, fight fight against the the core shift. All right. So now that all of the surface are built out, we got our tool paths made. Now we gotta check it over. I want to know what this machine is going to be doing, what it's gonna be looking like. So we're using this feature called Backplot right now, and we're gonna watch this tool come in, how it's gonna be making these angles. We'll see if you change. Right now, for this backside, it wants to be cutting on the backside of the cutter, but if you move forward in the tool path, its cutting edge becomes up front. So this is all things that I'm looking for so that I understand how this machine is going to be reacting just when I'm watching it. Uh, so I know to be expecting any weird angle changes within the fifth axis or the fourth axis. This, this gives me a really good idea of how this cutter is going to be moving in real life in the machine when I'm going through my first cuts. All right, so one thing to note is that uh, we've been sharing these and we've been learning because we've been sharing. So obviously we just got the machine not that long ago. It's only our third head and we share these videos and people have reached out to us who use these machines all the time and have actually helped us uh, perfect this. And I, I can't thank you guys enough, especially knowing that uh, somebody who knows a lot is watching somebody who doesn't know a lot and uh, is helping us along, especially Brett Barber. Brett Barber, uh, he's a friend of mine and he's uh, he's really shown some interest in helping us grow, which is, uh, that's a real friend. Now we got the finished product here. This is the combustion chamber. This is the one I actually did by hand. Uh, you can still see the pocket port is done by hand. So we use two different heads. And uh, so the combustion chamber is all CNC'd and it looks freaking beautiful. It cleans up. Now one thing you'll notice is that not everything cleans up. And that's because it's a casting. Even though it's a brand new casting, they're all gonna be different. So this combustion chamber is different than this one. And they're all different. So you guys thinking that they're always going to be the same. Well, it's a very imperfect part, so you'll never have them all the same, but we will uh, sometimes blend these in, but uh, this would not be one of those times. I don't think there's really enough meat on there to do anything besides sand it. The other thing we're going to do here is if you can see it right around the camshaft, you see how it is clearance. Well, most of these heads need to be clearanced even more for an RB26 because of base circles and lift and all that stuff. So basically what we're going to do is make a program just like we have for the 2JZ where it comes in here and it clearances it all up and uh, that way you can run as much lift as you want. And that gets us into a whole nother conversation about what parts are we going to put into this and that is going to be for another video. Sorry guys, it's time to end this one. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below because if you wanna see something on these RBs, please make sure you comment and, um, and we'll do it for you. Doodles. Get, get.